Welcome back to ECE 320A. We are now still in Unit 10, but we're wrapping that up, and this is another example of how to sketch a Bode plot. We're sketching a Bode plot for H sub 3 of S, and this is the one that we actually were using as an example to illustrate our different terms, so we won't belabor sketching those individual pieces necessarily, but I do want to illustrate and discuss a little bit more this complex factor or the quadratic factor and what's involved in sketching that. And at the end, we'll quickly verify what we've done via MATLAB. You should have this memorized. We have two plots, magnitude and phase, as a function of frequency. Those are on a semi-log axis so that we can put all of these different pieces together on one piece of paper. It gives us the ability to really compress what's happening over a large expanse of frequencies. The poles and zeros are all restricted to the left half complex S plane. In this particular Example, we're going to have all of these pieces. We'll have a constant piece. We'll have a piece at the origin. We'll have some linear factors, and we'll even have a quadratic factor, and we'll put all of those pieces together. As we've already done, we start with the pole zero form or any generic form. You could have had all of these multiplied out. You would then need to factor the denominator and the numerator to identify the zeros and the poles. We've already done that several times. We can now start canceling, and we end up with a gain term in this time constant form. Of 0 0.02, which is less than 1, and so we should be getting a negative gain across all frequencies due to that constant piece. Let's now talk a little bit more about this quadratic factor that has a damping ratio of 0.6. It has a natural frequency of 10. And what we can see then if we sketch this in the complex plane, we have these two complex conjugate poles. Maybe I shouldn't circle those. You might think that those are now zeros, but these are x's. Those are poles. We now are at minus 6 plus and minus j8, but what we want to do to sketch these is actually make that damping ratio go increase to zeta equal to 1, remaining the same natural frequency distance away from the origin. We're not shrinking or expanding on that location from the origin. So now we're approximating, we're moving zeta from 0.6 down to 1 and keeping the natural frequency. So for this class to help with our sketching, zeta in general can be anywhere between 0 and 1 for a complex pole factor. If zeta is bigger than 1, then you have two real distinct roots of that quadratic. But in this class, what we want to do is focus on quickly sketching these quadratic factors. And to do that, we're making this rather substantial approximation, and that is to let zeta go ahead and just become 1. That allows us now to convert this set of complex roots into two real roots, and in this case we have roots at minus 10 and minus 10, so we have two real poles and we can quickly sketch the magnitude behavior associated with that quadratic factor. Everything is happening at 10 and since we have two, we're not going down at 20 dB per decade, but we're actually going down at 40 dB per decade. And so once we get out to 100, I'm sorry, 1,000, two decades beyond, we're down at minus 80 dB. So our individual behavior due to that quadratic factor 
its magnitude now looks like this. And you should use a ruler so that your line can be straighter and look a little bit cleaner than my hand-drawn sketches. The phase now is going to be changing over a two-decade interval centered about the break frequency. So we're starting at 0.1 times 10 in this case, or 1, and we're starting at 0 degrees. They're poles, so it's negative, and we're going to then be going all the way down to minus 180, 2 times minus 90. We'll finish then at minus 180. We will start at 0, and halfway between, we will be at minus 90 degrees, so that now we have this particular shape, this is now minus 90 degrees per decade, the slope, because it's a quadratic factor. So that's now the phase of this approximation of our quadratic factor, and we've made that approximation by assuming that zeta is equal to 1. So now let's go ahead and return to this particular transfer function and go ahead and sketch its overall magnitude and phase plot, Bode plots, by combining all the pieces. We have a constant piece of 0.02. So that now, if we looked at that, that would give us this particular term, this is 20 times the log of 0 0.02, and we computed that to be minus 34 dB. We had a 0 at 0.1, so if we are looking at its contribution, we're going flat until we get out to 0.1, and then we go up at 20 dB per decade. We had a pole at the origin. That's this continually sloping line crossing 0 dB at 1. We had a pole at 10. No, we had a quadratic factor that we were approximating with two poles, real poles at 10. So this slope better be at minus 40 dB. Maybe I can label this. This is now plus 20 dB per decade. This is minus 20 dB per decade. This slope is minus 40 dB per decade. And this slope due to, now we're going out to 200, and that's 30% of the distance between 100 and 1,000. This one is sloping at minus 20 dB per decade. So those are our component pieces for the magnitude behavior. We want to start putting all of those pieces together, and to do that, we now need to go far enough or low enough in frequency, far enough to the left. This is, again, we're plotting this on a semi-log plot. Those frequencies are now illustrating log of omega. We go over let's say, to a value of 10 to the minus 3. We are 60 dB up here from our pole at the origin, and we now need to add to that minus 34. So now we go down 30, so and then another 4, so we should be at 26. So we're about right there, and we just go down at a slope until we slope of minus 20 dB until we reach 0.1. So at 0.1, we're at 20 and minus 34, so that should be minus 14. Or if we just sort of do that in here, we are now at a minus 14 for our slope, and once we reach 
that particular point, what happens? Now we're sloping down at minus 20 dB and sloping up at plus 20 dB. Those are the only slope changes we have. So we're actually flat until we get all the way over to 10, which is the next time that we see some new slope introduced by a pole or zero factor. At that point, what's happening? Well, now we're going down at 40 dB per decade, so we should actually be parallel to this. If it was drawn accurately, we would be parallel to this slope of minus 40 dB per decade, and we're starting at minus 14 dB. So if we anywhere on this, we would just go down 14 dB from that, and I'm not sure that I'm going to be that accurate, but now we keep doing that until we reach 200, and then what happens? At that point, so let me start connecting these dots, if I can do that somewhat closely. There's our original slope due to the pole at the origin. Then we flattened out until we reached our quadratic poles. Then we are sloping at 40 dB per decade until we reach 20, I'm sorry, 200, which is 30% of the distance between 100 and 1,000. And beyond that, now we have introduced another pole factor at minus 20 dB. So what I would do is I would say, oh, let me go over here to 2,000 and actually go 20 dB, actually 60 dB down from this minus 70 almost that we were at. So if we now went down 20, 40, and 60. Now I need to sketch that. And that's now my resulting magnitude plot. This is minus 20 dB per decade. We're flat. This is now minus 40 dB per decade. And this is minus 60 dB per decade, and that's now our straight line approximation of our magnitude plot. And we can see then that for high frequencies, we're sloping at minus 60 dB. At low frequencies, we're sloping at minus 20. There is an interval of frequencies where we are not sloping, and that's between in our straight line plot between 0.1 and 10. Let's now see if we can go ahead and sketch the phase curve. And I've already come down into that phase curve with my magnitude plot. But here we had a pole at the origin. That gives us this minus 90 for all frequencies. We had a 0 at point 0.1. And that now gets spread over two decades. So that goes from 0 at 0 0.01 to 90 at 1. We had a quadratic pole factor of natural frequency 10. And that gets then transitions from 1 to 100, 180 degrees. And then we had a 90 degree transition for our last pole between 200 I'm sorry, between 20 and 2,000 because it was a break frequency of 200. So let's see now if we can actually sketch that net result. So we start low enough in frequency, and that gives us then our phase due only to the pole at the origin. Then we start going up. And in fact, we can continue to go up until that zero factor quits contributing phase. And at that point, it turns off, but we have this pole that kicks in. 
and this particular pole is going down twice as fast as we were just going up because it's a quadratic and it just keeps it goes down until we reach the point where the last pole starts contributing phase and that's a decade before it its break frequency, or that's now at 20, so that's going to be 30% of the distance between 10 and 100, and at that point, we're going down, so we were going up at plus 45 degrees per decade. Here we're going down at minus 90 degrees per decade. For a little bit more, we're actually going to go down quite a bit in terms of rate. Now we're going down at minus 135 degrees per decade because we have the minus 90 and the minus 45 both contributing and then the quadratic factor quits changing the phase but we still have remaining out until we reach 2000 we have this 45 degrees per decade change due to the single pole at 200. So this is now the behavior that we have due to our particular total response. This is now the total phase. This particular piece was due to our zero. This was due to our pole at minus 200. And this piece was due to our complex pole. And we obviously had this piece, which was our pole at the origin. And that now is our phase curve for that more complicated transfer function that we've been playing with for quite some time. But we could then, if somebody now asks you some specific questions, we've already sort of talked about these as we were going, but let's just illustrate how you could now answer some limiting questions or questions about the magnitude and slope at particular points in frequency. What is the magnitude slope at A low frequencies? And now you might say, well, what's low frequencies? Well, now what's low is anything to the left of something that might be breaking. So low is now to the left of that particular yellow highlighted line. And now you can see the red curve is minus 20 dB per decade. So the slope, the magnitude slope, is then minus 20 dB per decade. What if we wanted to know what is the magnitude slope at high frequencies? And now we go up to our magnitude and we see that if we really looked at this, or if we go back, we could even just make that without even sketching. We could look at how many more poles we have than zeros. What's our pole zero excess? We have a fourth order denominator, a first order numerator. So the difference between those, four minus one is three. We have three poles acting at high frequencies. Each pole gives us minus 20 dB per decade. We have three of those, so we should be sloping at minus 60 dB per decade. And in fact, that's what our magnitude plot is showing. And this is due to this pole zero excess being four minus one or three. And now what is the magnitude slope? Maybe not at, but let me say between
omega equal to 0 0.1, and this is based on our straight line approximation, and omega equal 1 radian per second. So now we go back to point 1, which is right here, and we say out to here, what is our slope of the magnitude plot? And the slope between those two frequencies is in fact 0 dB. So here, the answer to this third question would be 0 dB per decade. We could also answer similar questions about the phase. And this is the total phase here. And we might say, okay, what's the phase at low frequencies? And remember, low frequencies changes occur a decade before the breaks on those particular terms. Here we have actually a zero at point one, but it starts contributing phase a decade before that. So we need to go to frequencies less than 0 0.01 or less than 10 to the minus 2. So if we go back to 10 to the minus 3, the phase is now minus 90 degrees. And finally, just to sort of wrap this up, what is our phase at high frequencies? And you could compute these by looking at the transfer function itself. Here, the high frequency behavior is influenced by the pole zero excess. We have three more poles than zeros. Each pole gives us minus 90, so we should be looking at minus 90 times 3, or minus 270 degrees. We could go back to our sketch, and in fact, we did finish at minus 270 degrees, and all of that is then a way of verifying or validating this sketch that you've just done by hand, or you could now do another check by looking at the back of the book via MATLAB, and now you input the numerator, you input the denominator in two different pieces, and we've learned that we can combine those two polynomials with the convolution command, the CONV function, in MATLAB, we could check the roots of both of those polynomials, and in fact, they are where we expected those to be, so that we should be, when we look at the Bode plot of this object transfer function object H3, we should be comfortable or confident in its look or behavior based on putting in the correct data. And in fact, this is consistent with what we have sketched by hand. We have this flat region centered around 1 radian per second or 10 to the 0. We have a bump in our phase, and then we transition quite dramatically until we get down to a limiting value of phase of minus 270. And if you wanted to, you could actually start to compute or calculate the slope of the magnitude at high frequencies and the slope at low frequencies and verify that, in fact, they are consistent with what you've drawn by hand. So I want to congratulate you on your now, hopefully, skills in sketching and understanding Bode plots, which is what you're going to need as we move further into the material and start talking about filters.